morning walk. This is a new 2021 change in my life. In 2020, I was getting really sedentary. So for 2021, I can't promise I do it every day, but a lot of the days before work, I'll get up, I'll go for a nice walk, get some sunshine in the cold. It's fine. I'm Canadian. We deal with it. Thought I'd bring you on my day today. The thing that makes today special is that it's my annual evaluation day, so that's gonna be interesting. I do have interim feedback conversations with my boss throughout the year, so I should have a sense. Nothing that he says should be shocking to me. If it is, then he's doing a bad job of giving feedback. But it's definitely gonna be interesting being evaluated on essentially an entire year of working from home, where he doesn't fully see what I'm doing, he doesn't know how I'm acting during the day, he doesn't know when I'm sitting around bored twiddling my thumbs on my desk, he doesn't know. So that's the big event of the day that's happening at 3 p.m. And before that, I do kind of have a pretty packed day of meetings and that's kind of my fault because what I did, I'm trying something new today. I booked an hour and a half off in the morning from 9 to 10.30, I know early, but I'm an early bird, um, to work on a specific project and I'll explain to you what it is in two seconds. And then I invited my whole team and I named the meeting Watch Michelle Do Project. The way that my company works is there are three levels of individual contributors in the actuarial department. We'll call it level one, level two, level three. And I am a level three individual contributor. I am evaluated on my own performance. I'm not evaluated on the performance of other people. I'm not evaluated on the performance of my team. But as a level three individual contributor, coaching is part of my job. And so normally, when we're in the office, I can walk past someone's computer, see that they're struggling, help them out. But also, on the flip side, people can walk past my computer, see what I'm working on, and get a little bit of insight on how does Michelle approach a problem. Now let's be clear, Michelle does not have the perfect methodology to solve every actuarial problem. But the more you talk to people, the more you bounce ideas off of people, the more you think, okay, how can I approach this analysis? How can I approach this problem? And so I thought, you know what? I'll invite my team. They can show up if they want. They can skip it if they want. And then I will just talk out loud as I'm approaching this project. As I'm thinking through what I'm doing, I'll share my screen and then they'll see what I'm working on. And then maybe someone will get some insights hopefully. And that's on being a leader. Do you like my flamingo socks? Thank you. I'll assume you said yes. So what's this project that I'm starting the day off with? If you don't know, <laughs> I probably should have said this earlier, I'm a personal lines pricing actuary. I come up with prices for car and home insurance for a living. There can be minor changes to a pricing algorithm. I can go in and say, let's make red cars 5% more expensive and leave everyone else's price the same. Or we can do a complete algorithm overhaul. I'm not the one modeling the complete algorithm overhaul that we're working on. You might have heard of the term data science, possibly. At my company, we have a whole department of a joint actuarial data scientist team who work on modeling projects, not just for coming up with new pricing algorithms, but for all different kinds of insurance problems. We are training in-house these joint actuarial data scientist people where each brings their own background and own perspective. Now because I'm not on that team, I've had the luxury of procrastinating learning Python. Now if I've said it once, I've said it 7,000 times. Learning Python is on my to-do list. I don't know when I'm gonna start to doing it, but I'm procrastinating it. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. This actuarial data science team is doing the Python modeling and I as a pricing actuary, I'm coming in with a few different perspectives, insights with regards to things like constraints on the model. As someone has more years experience, the price has to go down. We know this when looking at loss experience, we know this intuitively. This could be a hypothetical constraint that we may or may not include in the model depending on whether or not we think it's reasonable. When talking about a machine learning model, this scary black box of an algorithm. In general, the model will follow the loss experience. In general, the model will know that when you have more years experience, the price will go down. But because there are so many interactions, you may have a few odd cases where as people get more years experience, their price starts to go up. And then you have this bad customer experience where their price goes from $1,000 to 
$2,000 to $900 to $1,300 to $700. You don't want this yo-yo. No need for that. When you buy insurance, we use information about you to come up with the prices to determine what your risk level is and how much that risk level costs. Some things about you are going to be relatively static, such as where you live. Yes, you can move, for sure, and people do, and when you move your price will change, but it's not unreasonable that for 10 years of your policy, you're living at the same address, that price factor will stay the same because you haven't moved anywhere. Then you got things in a pricing model that can age. Things like your age, your years of driving experience, the age of your car. Every time that you renew your policy, this is going to go plus one, plus one, plus one, and we need to be aware of how the model treats you when you go plus one, plus one, plus one. I don't want a plus 50, minus 30, plus 80, minus 20 situation where people's prices are just going nuts because that's bad customer experience. We don't want that. All this to say, the modeling team has sent me some collections of exhibits that I can look at to try to interpret this machine learning black box of a model. Lots of diagnostic tools and graphs to look at to review by different variables, by different factors and say, does the model make sense? Do we need to fix something? Have we broken everything? We're gonna break everything, not intentionally. Welcome to my day. Whew. Okay, well that was productive, I think. I don't know if any of them got anything out of it, but I actually think I benefited a lot from having the accountability of being forced to continue talking through my thought process and forming complete thoughts instead of letting my thoughts just sort of scatter for an hour and a half and then getting distracted and sending emails or doing something. Like I was focused on my task for an hour and a half because I have to say it out loud. So that was kind of a good, but yo, Talking for an hour and a half is exhausting, especially, especially when your body decides to wake up at three in the morning for no reason and then not fall back asleep. But we move on. We have black tea. It's fine. I don't drink caffeine often, so that'll keep me buzzy. I also haven't eaten breakfast yet today, which does not usually happen. Usually I eat earlier, but again, I was chit-chatting too much. So I just made myself some oatmeal. Hey, go and eat that while I continue doing my work. My next meeting is at 11.30 this morning, so I've got an hour break to actually do a little work, go to the bathroom, all that fun stuff. And then at 11.30 we have our bi-weekly, so twice a week, um, status meeting with the team where we just all go over project status, um, chat about what we're doing, what we're working on, so that everyone knows what's up. Back to ye old computer. This is me pretending to type on the computer. Michelle, are you actually gonna show us what you're working on? Michelle, are you gonna show us your screen and uh, walk us through your project? Michelle, are you gonna show us your confidential company information that you use to do your project work so that we, the strangers on the internet, can develop and grow? No, um, I'm not gonna show you my screen as I work. I'm also not gonna record myself typing and do like a time lapse of me typing. So that's boring. I'm not gonna risk my cushy, well-paid actuarial job for the $5 in AdSense that I'm gonna get off this video. I've done the risk assessment in my head and it is not worth it, not at all. I shared a meme on my actuarial Instagram page. Um, you should check it out if I can find it. Editing Michelle will put it here, but it was basically like an actuary on a boring day, sitting on a computer. An actuary on an exciting day, sitting on a computer. It's not interesting. I don't know why you want day in my life videos but I appreciate <laughs> that you want to watch my day. So I will film my day, but not my screen with the actual work and no typing time lapses unless that's your thing. And then maybe next time, let me know in the comments if you love a typing time lapse. Keep on my fake typing. Oh, I'm a sleepy human. Okay, so it's amazing how much of your time can be spent not actually working in that it feels like you're not working. I'm not manipulating data. I'm not analyzing all the things. I'm just replying to emails, <laughs> answering people's questions. Because I'm the person who's been on my team the longest, a lot of people think of me as the key point of contact and there are other people on my team who get asked questions too. It's not just me, but I definitely get a good number of questions in a day that I just go, answer, answer, answer. So that's what I did. Um, time to have my status update. I poured myself a bowl of Ringolos because I'm a grown-up. I'm gonna fuel myself with carbs. <laughs> terrible, terrible carbs. And then we'll deal with the acne later. <laughs>
Okay, bye. <laughs> Time to escape from my office. Let's go for a lunch walk before I have my 1 p.m. meeting. Let's turn this way so the lighting is better. Hey, welcome to my apartment. Welcome to my crib. I'm gonna go for a lunch walk now because, because my 1 p.m. meeting is gonna be a frustrating one. I don't wanna get into it. I just know. Exercise will help. <laughs> Wish me luck. Good luck, bye. Hello, little cow. Are you having fun chewing? Are you having fun? Hello, other cow. Can't really see you, but I care about you. Cow one, cow two. What an absolutely beautiful sunny winter day. I hope you can hear me through my mask. To be determined while editing. Okay, so my 1 p.m. meeting was not as bad as it could have been. Look at me being all optimistic and stuff, that's good. Basically the context for this is I hate change. I am very resistive to change. I do not enjoy change. And I'm a little bit like vocal about that, I don't know, I don't know. And there's a change coming. And this is a meeting about the change. And I've been very hesitant towards the change. And usually these meetings are not helpful in making me feel less hesitant about the change but this meeting was okay and now i have an hour to work before my evaluation at 3 p.m superstar employee about to get fired who knows it's almost eval o'clock <laughs> how we feeling actually not particularly stressed i've had enough evaluations now that i just sight is what it is. I'm being evaluated on the whole of 2020. I spent the first, I think, four or five months, I got promoted in May. So the first four and a half months, I was level two individual contributor. Now I am level three individual contributor. So that's the remaining of 2020. So most of the year I'm being evaluated at a higher level. And um, yeah, uh, today I won't be finding out about my raise. I will, I think, be finding out my score at my company they give us a score between 0 and 200 where the minimum you should be getting is 100 100 is meets expectations 125 is surpasses expectations 150 is consistently exceeds expectations and then 200 is leading so because I'm new to my role I'm expecting something in the range of 100 to 125 maybe we'll see what my boss thinks of me while working from home. Wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. And we're done! It's gonna be a bit of an anticlimactic end to the evaluation portion of this story because I didn't get my ranking today. He said we're only gonna get it in a month or a few weeks. So I know neither my raise nor my ranking score percent rating. Um, but he said nice things about me, which was kind of him. And he gave me two points of development and then said that if I don't like them and I start yelling at him, that he can just take out his earbuds and then he won't have to hear me yelling, which, fair. But I didn't even yell. I'm so nice. I'm so, I don't like feedback. I don't like people's opinions on my life, so I'm a little bit difficult to deal with but I was very nice he had good feedback I did I agreed with one of them and I disagreed with the other one the two development things uh, one he said I was um, procrastinating a bit on my work which I have been um, and I would say more so in 2020 than other years probably because we're working from home I am a productive procrastinator so while I'm not working on the thing that I'm supposed to I do other cool things but I've been cutting the thing that I'm supposed to do pretty down to the wire, not leaving enough time for um, review by other people. I just sort of slice it up and go. <laughs> and so I think that's some pretty valid feedback that I can procrastinate. And I, I make my deadlines, but I should make my deadlines with some buffer. Um, <laughs> and his other piece of feedback was that I ask good questions and he doesn't have a good example of it, but 
sometimes I ask questions without having a solution in mind, which I don't really agree with, and he didn't have an example, because I think I have a lot of solutions and a lot of opinions, and I do ask a lot of questions, but I don't think I'm the kind of person who only raises problems and never comes up with solutions. It is, it's reasonable feedback to give to someone and it is feedback that I've given to interns before or people that I've coached. You know, think about the problem before you ask for help. Overall, I didn't get fired. So that's a win. Gonna work for another hour-ish, do some actuarying, and then I have yoga at 5.45. So that's exciting. Finished my yoga for the night, so it's time to eat some dinner. I think that really pretty much concludes the actuarial portion of my day. I'm just gonna be a couch potato, watch some YouTube, scroll through TikTok. Don't forget to thumbs up this video, subscribe if you aren't already, support the actuarial YouTubers, the actuarial influencer lifestyle. Follow me on Instagram, at actuarial, same way it's spelled here. Leave me a comment below if you want other videos, something, yada, blada, yada. Share this with a friend, maybe. I don't know. Thank you for calling. Bye.